The DAZN Boxing Show is on the road from London, where this Saturday night, Sonny Edwards makes his matchroom debut against Andreas Campos at Wembley's Ova Arena. The IBF World Flyweight title is on the line, and the countdown starts now. Alongside us now is the champ, Sonny Edwards. You must be raring to go. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, I feel like it's a great show, a great show to be a part of, a great show to be, you know, the main event in my home city. Um, Johnny Fisher sold loads of tickets. It's great. <laughs> uh, 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 but in all seriousness, absolutely buzzing. I feel like, you know, I've been, I've been hounded for years. When are you going to sign with Eddie? When are you going to sign with Eddie? You know what I mean? And, 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 and I match room, and now I'm here. I feel like it's done at the right time. I think it's the perfect time. I feel like this is a great um, opportunity to sort of showcase my skills, showcase my ability, probably make the other champions in my division a little bit more scared than they already are to fight me. Um, but yeah, I'm buzzing to be on the zone. I've been a big fan of the zone actually since it's come because the before the bell stuff, you know, watching at four o'clock till 11 o'clock, then the next starts to before the bell. Like just, I've sat there so many times from four o'clock in the afternoon to four o'clock in the morning. And now I'm just buzzing to be a part of that whole setup. You know what I mean? There, there's been some back and forth now for what the best part of two years with Campos. He feels he deserves his shot. You feel your level's above. What can you tell us about Campos? All jokes aside, do you think he's a worthy challenger? Not particularly. I feel like there's much better fights out there. I feel like there's much better fighters out there. I feel like any fighter that's never been 12 rounds doesn't really deserve any place in a, in a world title boxing ring. I think that should be one in the boxes, you know. Is the box ticking expert Barry over here. I think that's one of the boxes you should have to tick. Before you get in with an elite fighter like me that's made elite fighters look silly, I think it's nothing but coming over for an opportunity to pay there, in my Does opinion. Does that put pressure, added pressure on you then? So it's not even about winning as such, it's about looking good as well now. I don't, that's all external. I think external pressure and extrinsic feedback. You know, I did an A level in a, a PE, so. Um, <laughs> In all seriousness, and I went to university actually, but in, in all seriousness, that, the external side of things went away a long time ago. My ego, my identity is never challenged by, you know, what people say on Twitter, what people think I should do. I know I'm a great boxer. I know I'm very good at what I do. What I do, other fighters that have spent their whole life fighting look at me and ask me, how, how do you move like that? I don't, I don't know how you... So I know what I bring to the ring is something special. Um, I feel like I'm going to impress. I feel like there's not really been a fight that I haven't impressed in some which way. Yeah, just because I'm not the, the biggest knockout artist or go out there looking for it. But I will generally challenge anyone. Show me an opponent on my record that I should have stopped that I didn't. It doesn't exist. Most fighters that everyone celebrates for the knockouts, well, you definitely should have stopped him. You definitely should have stopped him. Like the, they're the easy opponents. I've been matched a certain way where I've had tests. People that can go the rounds were expected to go the rounds. And because they did go the rounds, all of a sudden it's, oh, Sonny can't punch, Celebrate. Sonny can't do this. Yeah. Come sparring, I need two, three opponents anytime I want some long rounds. There's very few people that can go actual 12 rounds with me when I'm in that mindset. But when I box and get in there, all I'm thinking about is winning. But now I've turned the corner a bit and now I like entertaining a bit more. I like showing a bit more flair. I like showing a bit more strings to the bow because I feel like, yeah, sometimes the scorecards might get, you know, a couple points closer because I've stayed there, let them hit arms for two, uh, two minutes and someone gave a 10-9. That's fine because the next two, three rounds after that was easy. There was nothing in the punches where before there was. So I'm, you know, tactically breaking people down and making the percentages of my winning even more. I couldn't just move on the back foot against world level fighters because they read you, they start picking up on the patterns when you try and escape. And they also make it look like you're negative. I feel like since I've been a champion, I've turned the corner a bit and yeah, boxing has been relatively easy. Well, Sonny, thank you very much for your time. Do the business and we will catch you very soon. Which camera is it, Wiz? could go down as already one of the best fighters Britain's ever had. I want the fight to, to cement my legacy. I'm never going to let someone stall my career. I believe I'm as good as anyone that's doing it right now. I'm not here to just take part. I'm here to stand out. Well, alongside us now is the man who's put this show together, Eddie Hearn. You're buzzing off of Sunny Edwards, isn't you? And I guess even more so, just flyweight division. Yeah, you know why? Because... I like the fact that he's a character, he's a personality. People don't like him, people like him, people have got an opinion on him. 
But when you got a fighter that you think, you know what, I think he could beat everybody. Like, and when he signed a contract to fight, bam, Julio Cesar Martinez, all of them, it's not, oh, we'll finish this fight and then we'll sit down and we'll negotiate. He's already signed. He knows exactly how much he's in. Mm. And I believe, right, you could put this kid in with Bam Rodriguez, Julio Cesar Martinez, Delakian, Roman Chocolito Gonzalez, Estrada, all these people. He'd fight them one after the other, back to back. <laughs> and honestly, in your heart of hearts, would you make him an underdog in any of those fights? Like, listen, we've still got to see it against the elite guys, but yeah. I just think he's style, Barry. You know, when I, when I watched him against Muthalani, I was like, and I know he was older, but he was still no, an established still world champion. Yeah. It was embarrassing. The it thing, was embarrassing. Sonny's superpower, how do you train against him? I know with a guy, how do you train with a guy with no rhythm? Because mm. you can't read him, because he he'll do something different every time, he, every time he makes a move or throws a punch. There's never a set pattern to his work, so how can you read him? And for, for people like Bam, who, who I'm a massive fan of, I love Bam, but how do you close the distance with a guy who, who, you, who you just don't know what he's going to do Who next? do you make in a favourite in that fight? I would still say right now, I, I'm, sorry, I'm a big Sonny Edwards fan, I was, I'd have to say Bam because of his, his body of work, I think, but also, you could also say, you know, that, that Quadras and Rung Versailles were, were, yeah. weren't, at the, weren't at, not, no, at their peaks, they maybe zipped over the hill a little bit, so he's going to become a fresher Sonny, but I, it's a hard one to pick. I guess it's still that level that, I mean, Bam is on another level to anything he's ever fought before. Yeah. So it's like, we're all getting excited, and it's my job to sell the fight, but sometimes they step up to that level, and actually, yeah. they're, oh, these, they're not... These, they're these not flies and super flies, and like, it's... They, 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 the super the super flies at the minute, with Sonny can go up and down. They, they may be the best weights in, in world boxing. I think so. The Someone just said to me there, you know, you, you seem to be championing the smaller weights. And I said, like, genuinely, people think we do it because their purses are smaller. But honestly, when do you see a bad flyweight yeah. or super flyweight fight at championship level? Like, it's always competitive. It's always exciting. It's always fast-paced. And they're prepared to fight each other all the time. It's so refreshing. Um, but I think, you know, Sonny's put pressure on himself I mean, didn't exactly big up Campos, do you know what I mean? I'm sitting there yeah. thinking, all right, mate, shut <laughs> up, we've still got some tickets to sell. But at the same time, it's like, if you really think that about this kid, you've got to school him, beat him up, and then hopefully stop him. And the, the problem I have sometimes with the trainers is, and they're right, but I'm like, listen, after six rounds, you've embarrassed someone and schooled them, starts to get a little bit boring. And the trainer will say, yeah. shut up, Eddie, we're winning every round, go away. I'm saying, I'm just telling you, if you want to be a star, You've got to beat him up and try and stop him. If Sonny Edwards can score this guy for six rounds and then stop him in the back half of the fight, I like that. You know, and then we can go into get momentum to go into a massive fight. But he'll go anywhere for the fight. Is, is there is that so I mean he's put pressure on himself that he has to not just win but look good. But if he just does win the 12 rounds, it's not that eye-catching. Are those big fights still there? Yeah, they, they, they the have to happen and they'll happen next. And they might be easier to make, you know, if it's a if it's a performance yeah, where he struggles. Yeah. But that no one really, and listen, if I represented, and this is one of the reasons I signed Sonny Edwards, I don't mind saying it, if Sonny Edwards weren't with me, I wouldn't want to put Martinez or Rodriguez in with oh, him. Of course. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The reason I'll do it is because we've got the champions. But I'll be straight up, and I don't think there's many trainers that look at the style of Sonny Edwards and go, yeah, it's got to be big enough for them to go, all right, the money's good enough, it's a unification, it's a big fight, we'll take the risk. But he has got the style that you just look at. For me, as a, like a trainer, a, just think, oh, like you say, you just can't train for it, you can't spar for it. You're going to get in there, you're not going to know what to expect. Yeah. People talk about, again, Campos, same kind of thing with these fighters that move well. Oh, you've just got to close the distance, <laughs> you've got to throw loads of punches, you've got to beat him up, you've got to push the pressure. It's probably the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the, the chief support, one of the other two world title fights, Brilliant fight. It's Johnson versus Scott Neal. Yeah. It's a great fight. I just can't see how that doesn't set fire straight away. But it's a brilliant fight. And Neely Hughes, Healy. Yeah, we said, didn't we? I mean, Ellie Scott has got loads of skill. Probably her only weakness is sometimes she unravels during the fight by wanting to have a fight too much herself, by not staying disciplined. But it, it makes that, brilliant action. It, it though, does. It? And, but that's not good news against Shanika no, Johnson no. because Shanika Johnson is strong and tough. She's got a very good work rate. And, you know, we just said off, off camera there, she needs to almost do what Chantel Cameron did, which was to force the fire as early as the first round. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If you over yeah. 10 two-minute rounds, if you let your opponent four, five, six rounds in and you've won your five one up or something like that, it's fight over. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you need Ellie Scottney to come back after that first round knowing she's been in a fight. And sometimes you can let, that really comes down to, for me, the training team. Because I think that's where Jamie Moore and Nigel Travis did such a good yeah. job. Because you can say to a fighter, right, we want to start fast. But how easy I could imagine going, you know, just sort of next thing you've had three rounds, you're three nil down. So the corner have to get into Shanika and say, right, from this first belt, go at her. Because we're not, we don't see a lot of devastating punches no. in female boxing. And Ellie Scott is not really a puncher. She punches sharp and she punches accurate. But I feel like Shanika will have the confidence to walk her down. And that's going to be a great fight. Because yeah. Ellie Scott is always well, For Scott, it's important that she doesn't do enough, but she can do it. It's about when you finish punching, it's the angle off, mm. yeah. not going back in straight lines. You go back in straight lines, Johnson, because she is so tenacious, she'll walk you down. But she is a straight, she is a straight line sort of fighter, though. Mm. She doesn't have much variety either side of that. The, the, the style should be very good oh, for it's, Ellie. It's gonna, yeah, you know. but the strength, as we've seen yes. with Chandler Cameron, some, you know, with Katie Taylor, theoretically, on paper, someone coming right at you for Katie Taylor, that bunks back and coming back in with the combinations, was, was going to be a, a, a positive for Taylor. But Chandler Cameron never closed the distance. She, she pushed you back and kept it long. And maybe that's maybe something that Johnson has to do. We don't, not, not allow, not allow to get close enough to allow Ellie Scott need to get in close and spin her on the target. So work rate, punches thrown. You know, you saw that again with yeah. Chantel Cameron, where I think she threw three times as many punches as Katie Taylor and just letting your hands go for the two Women's minutes. Because, and so many close rounds in women's boxing. But I, I just feel that, you know, Ellie's probably not going to throw anywhere near as many punches as Shanika Johnson. Yeah. And Shanika's work rate has got to make up for the difference in skill, which I think yeah, does exist. But, I, but so, I gotta say, talking about work rate though, Nina Hughes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, this, I, I, I labelled her. I, I covered some early career, and I labelled her the female Cal Froch because mm. how tough she is. Yeah. And she's not a knockout artist, but every punch she throws is solid. You know, in that fight as well, when we looked at opponents, I don't think they were mad about the style of Katie Healy. No. And I think when you fight someone like Katie Healy, especially with that size and reach. You have to get inside and break her down ASAP. And the same thing about starting fast. I think you see Nina come out of the traps like yeah. a trap. But uh, when she fought in Dubai, I was like, you know, Lee Eaton was going on at me. She was, she's from Essex. I know, I know with the small hall she's been boxing at. Jamie Mitchell was looking for an opponent. I thought, you know what? I know she's never really beaten anyone, but give Nina Hughes a chance. It'd be a nice payday for her, and then she can probably retire. And we had a show that night. And I just got a message going, Nina Hughes has won whatever it was, 97, 93. I'm like, you know, so I was ringside so, that night. It was unbelievable. She's, she's so desperate to stay there and not lose this opportunity. She'll come out like a train yeah. on Saturday. Well, she's one of those fighters who, who you, like, almost, it's, it's a natural, they've got a natural engine. They just keep working, working mm. when they're tired. That Jamie Mitchell fight was a war of attrition after four mm. rounds. Mm. It literally was. And, but she just kept piling on the punches, not afraid to miss, hit you anywhere. On the back of your head to your knee, she just keeps throwing, keeps throwing, and and, yeah, and I've got her through. Well, so much to look forward to. Eddie, thank you very much, mate. We know you're a busy man. We'll see you Saturday. See you Saturday. And now, entering the arena, Alongside us now is the Romford Ball, Johnny Fisher. Johnny, buzzing for Saturday night? As always, Darren, it's great to be talking to you boys too. Just yeah, got a couple mate. of days now, get ready to, to fight on Saturday. What's the preparation been like for this one, John? Very good. It's obviously been different fighting a southpaw. Um, I've had good southpaw sparring with Roddy Camacho, an old head on his shoulders, a lot of experience there. Gideon has just won the ABAs and Tri-Nations. Tommy Fletcher, who can obviously punch very hard. And before that, I had Billum Smith and Chef Clark as a bit of preparatory sparring for that, so it's been good. Domestically, and the youth doesn't get much better than that, really, for no, preparation, no. of course. But what I was going to ask you is because there's a lot of pressure on you. You sell a lot of tickets, yeah. you're very popular, and 
No, as Eddie already said in the press conference, no, there's, there's a step up coming yeah. in, in your next one. You're going to step at the 10 rounds at championship level. Do you feel that pressure at all? I don't feel pressure of that. I just feel um, it's a pressure that I put on myself to perform. And I go into every fight anyway thinking this is a 50-50. I never think anything else than that. Yes, there's fights where you think, yeah, I should win that one, I should win this one. But every fight I get in there, I have the same mentality. So that won't affect me. Emilio Salas, he's tall. He's a southpaw, like you say. What threats does he pose in this fight? It's different. It's, it's just uh, it's, it's a different dynamic, isn't it, fighting a southpaw? You do notice it. It's different. The footwork's different. The jab has a different role, I believe. So I've got to be careful if I'm diving in too much. He's going to catch me with his backhand. So there's different risks at, at play. But it could play into my hands as well, as I like, I like finding a backhand as well. Just got to disguise it a bit, be a bit cuter with it. And, uh, yeah, I should get the job done. That's the plan. It's, uh, it, it's a really exciting time, I guess, for you. Yeah. at the minute and like Barry said there you're going to step up to, to 10 rounds after this is there any sort of route that you're after whether it be domestic or down the international route what, what is the sort of ideal plan in your mind yeah the ideal the, the, the sort of romantic route is southern area English British that, that would be great but things always change in boxing we know that you might get a youth title come up but I'd love to have a southern area title shot but I'm not overlooking Salas first because I can talk about making plans to fight this guy and that guy. I've got to beat this guy on Saturday first. And that's not that's not going to be an easy feat because this guy's experience. I think he beat early on in his career, beat a Golden Gloves champion. So he's got experience under his belt and I can't overlook him. And what, what, um, what's it been like sparring with Southport? Because you know, your jab's a good weapon. It gets you Obviously, your right hand's yeah. the one that pays the bills, but your jab gets you in the distance. Jab's the one that makes it all happen. But, but fighting the South, sparring the Southport, have you had to find the adjustments obviously, difficult? Yeah, obviously, you're, you're clashing a little bit more yeah. when, you, when your jabs, you're both trying to measure, but you can use it in a different way. It's not just about popping it all the time. It's about measuring up and getting that right hand in. You can use it to, as a rod. Mark Tews has been telling me it's your, it's your shield as well, and it gets you in and out of range. So, yeah, it's just been developing that. That's why this camp's been good as well because in my sparring as well, it's the first sort of camp where I've done 10 rounds off the bounce with two or three different guys. So whereas six months ago, a year ago, I might do six rounds, jump out, or do four with a top guy, jump out, do another four. It's been good psychologically to get 10 rounds under your belt in sparring as well, which, is, which yeah. has been good for me. Is there, just going back on the progress, look, we're not overlooking Salas here. I'm going to though. Yeah. You get the job done and you talk about the route that you'd like to go down. How far do you think you are? And has there been any conversations about you headlining shows? Oh, yeah, there's been conversations about that. Like, soon? Yeah, like, there's, for, if it was for a southern area, I think we could headline that, if it was for a southern and area. Where, and where would you do that? We spoke about the Romford dog track, Eddie said, but I don't <laughs> think that's going to be, uh, that's gonna be uh, uh, realistic. But the copper box or something like that would be good. Because um, it just, it just tantalises people a bit more. When I know there's a title on the line, um, just gets a little bit more of the people interested as well. So that would be good if we could if we get a, a title fight at some point. What about the rest of the card? So, you know, Sonny Edwards defending his IBF title. Do you keep an eye out on uh, everyone else who's on the card? Yeah, and I urge my supporters to do the same because a lot of my supporters aren't from a traditional boxing background. They'll be rugby fans or yeah. they'll be football fans from where I live and stuff. But there's some great fights on the, on the bill. And Sonny Edwards is one of them fighters who's, as Eddie's been saying in the build-up to this one, is pound for pound one of the best we've ever had. You'll see some great boxing on Saturday night as well from them guys. So come and tune in because uh, it's great to keep an eye on the other boys as well. Well, you heard it there. Tune in, Johnny. Thank you very thank much, you very mate. Much, Remember, you can catch his fight and the rest of the card live on the zone. And here's a reminder of what's coming your way on the main card this Saturday. The WBA World Bantamweight title is up for grabs in our opener as Nina Hughes faces Katie Healy. Chevron Clark looks to make it six wins from six when he takes on David Jameson. There's another female title fight when Ellie Scottney challenges Aussie Shanika Johnson for the IBF World Super Bantamweight crown. The co-main sees the return of the wrong football as Johnny Fitcher aims to take down Emilio Salas. Then it's the main event, the IBF World Flyweight title showdown between Sonny Edwards and Andreas Campos. Well, I'm alongside the great, the wonderful Barry Jones. Barry, looking forward to this show. It's a cracker. I mean, we start with the main event, Sonny Edwards, uh, Andreas Campos. It, look, I know sort of Sonny's talking this down a little bit, but when you've got someone like Campos, who is unbeaten, he's got the opportunity to be Chile's first ever world champion. That brings something to the table, doesn't it? Do you, do you know what? When, when people say he's Chile's first world champion, I was, I was going through the... I was going through boxers, they're going to, like... 
Are they going to be a bantamweight from the 60s or something that won the titles? <laughs> or, you know, or, or a, super, a super lightweight from, you know, from the 70s who must have picked up a title somewhere? And I can't find one, so it's an amazing feat. Campos can fight. You know, he punches harder than his record suggests. He got fast hands, fast feet. But he is direct with his approach. And I think with that, that makes him made for Sonny Edwards. I think he really does. I, I, I can't see nothing. Sonny will say there's no pressure. I just want to go and perform. But there is a pressure. He signed up, he signed up now you know, with Matchroom and own, and they got all the flyweights and all the super flyweights, which is a, maybe the best division in boxing. He has to perform to sell himself to the wider audience, not just to say, I can win. I can a win impressively. You haven't required. got to stop anybody. I think stopping, stoppage is a great. But you know what you're going to get with smaller guys. But he can put on a clinic and he can be mesmerizing. He's one of those fighters who can win a lopsided deci decision and it still be good to watch. Yeah. And they're very rare. He is that sort of maverick talent. And I guess with him as well, you, you want to look good going into these potential blockbusters. Julio Cesar Martinez, uh, Bam Rodriguez. You want to look good, don't you? Of course you do, because one, one commercially, you're selling yourself and you go, that, this is why I want to get paid X amount. But also, they, they're not the sort of fighters who will avoid him. No, Bam Rodriguez is not going to say, oh, Sonny looked good, I'll give him a miss. Oh, yeah. He's going to go, Sonny looked good, I really want him now. I really want to prove, because everyone's talking about him. They don't, they don't want... Bam Rodriguez wants all the focus on him. Talk about me, I'm the number one. Now, if you start talking to some, some kid from, from England, he's not going to be happy with that. Mm. So he's going to, his pride alone will make that fight. So it certainly looks good. Puts, and then there's, a, there's, a, there's already a, an argument who's the best in our weight division. He, he puts on a good performance. It's the last person you see, the last person in your mind. They're the one on your lips. Yeah. I mean, look, the card for me, there's some really standout fights in there. I like Ellie Scott, Nee, Shanika Johnson, Nina Hughes versus Katie Hilly. But one for me that I guarantee this is fireworks for three, four rounds Chev Clark, Jameson. It, I mean, that's going to deliver, surely. Do you know what? It's a real. Like, I think you know, Chev Clark had the test in his last fight, but I think this is the real test for him. Jameson's a good fighter, it's a step up for Clark. I would say that. And for Jameson, it might be a step up for him, but who knows? You know, I think against Mikel Lowell, no, he did really well until he got stopped. With it. He did. But, but I think he broke his jaw in the eighth round, so no, he didn't get stopped, stopped. You know what I mean? It's the difference. That he, he had to retire in the corner. So it's a hard fight for Chev. He's going to hit the guy. He's going to be hittable, Jameson. He's, he's not going to move. And that's going to be maybe the first time... I know, I know he didn't get the stoppage recently, Clark, but the first time he's going to hit a guy who's going to fire back with the same venom. It's a real test for him. Yeah, and a domestic yeah. scrap that you need, I think, for him to build. No, he'll get confident. If, if Clark can get the win anyway in a tough fight, another tough fight, but this one will be a real tough... I think that gives him that inner confidence to know he can dig deep over 10 rounds. Yeah, and the same night, early hours of Sunday morning, Jaime Munguia, Sergei Dever Deverchenko, excuse me, is surely his oh, toughest fight, would you say? I think it is. No, Munguia, no, he, no, he, he was a superstar at, like, 21. And he sort of had a stutter step a little bit, I would say. He's looked really good, but he hadn't really had that step up that we thought he was going to have. Devrinchenko is the step up. It's a dangerous fight. I mean, as to say, you know, it wouldn't be a massive upset if Devrinchenko would get the win. I honestly, I think, you know, the Golovkin fight, he, got, he lost, but it was close. You know, the Jacobs fight was very, very controversial. You know, it's, there's an argument there that this kid, you know, you know is, is really top draw. So I think for Munguia... It's a, real, it's a real test for him. He's good enough, but he has to show it again. No, he sort of went off the boil a little bit. Now it's the time now. It's the opportunity for him to shine against a genuine world-class fighter. Yeah, and another one coming up. Tiafema Lopez versus Josh Taylor. What a fight that is. I mean, that, that really is a, a toss of a coin, I think. It, it, it almost... This, <laughs> two years ago, this is a super fight. Two under, two, Teofimo Lopez really was an undisputed champion. No, Haney had the title, but you know, really, it was Lomachenko's WBC title when he beat Lomachenko for all the other belts. So you've got two undefeated, unified, undisputed champions, really, with have gone into this fight. But now they both had one that hasn't lost, but very controversial win against, against Jack Catchell. The other one's lost his titles, of course, Teofimo Lopez, moving up in weight. Can punch still. I think Taylor with his work ethic, will make Lopez work too hard. The only worry is staying at that weight, super lightweight. Yeah, yeah. With Lopez jumping in with that really good left hook, if he catches Taylor early and there are signs of, of, of problems making the weight, and, and the catch-all fight where he got dropped heavy, I thought, is not, was just one, just a one-off, was a sign that his chin is starting to show cracks, then Lopez might, might knock him out. But I think, for me, I think, I think Taylor... 
He looks back to his best. He's a grit. He's a nasty. He's got that bit between his oh, teeth. Oh, mate. He? he has. And also, he's better when he's in the fire. No, he's, he's not better. He's not a better boxer when he's in safety. He means to be in danger. That's when he thinks the best. You know, you know fighters like yeah, that. Yeah. When me and you are different. We like to box from range. <laughs> we can think better with space and time. Yeah. He thinks better when he has no space and has no time. And I think this is the sort of fight that will have that. So I think for me, I think it's Taylor, maybe by a late stoppage. Yeah. Well, so much to look forward to live on the zone. But make sure you tune in Saturday night, 7 p.m. for Sonny Edwards versus Andreas Campos. could go down as already one of the best fighters Britain's ever had. I want to fight to, to cement my legacy. I'm never going to let someone stall my career. I believe I'm as good as anyone that's doing it right now. I'm not here to just take part, I need to stand out. <laughs>